the sound on. All right, so packages and docs. Main things you want to get out of this presentation is one, unique namespaces, and then two, this concept that all of your code, I'm just looking for some sort of a visual here, all of your code is uh, organized, you know, the, the workspace, uh, so the workspace, there's a nice picture of it. The workspace is uh, really important in organizing your code. And so uh, namespaces, how many people have heard of unique namespaces or namespaces? I know there's some people doing Android programming and you have that. So a unique namespace, did we talk about this on Tuesday? So a unique namespace, we all have a unique namespace, right? I actually currently in my Fresno City College class, I have two students, Brandon Yang. Both Brandon Yang. One's Brandon P. Yang, one's Brandon B. Yang. And it's like, they turn in their attendance cards, and it's like, Brandon Yang. I'm like, I have no idea which one this is. You know? <laughs> one of them was here. Oh, I'll give them both credit. <laughs> right? Because they don't have a unique name. And so we have to uniquely identify our code. And if we're going to do that in a public environment where we're sharing code, you know, what we're talking about right here is a namespace. And I just lost all of you. <laughs> Reading. Go for it. Read it. C++, we have prop most teachers teach you to put the, we'll put the phrase at the top of your file using namespace standard, which is that all the C++ standard library functions are written in standard namespace. So the same idea. So basically, if we have a bunch of code, and there's the Go SDK, and then there's code from other people, like we got to keep everybody's code in some, some way uniquely named. And, uh, and so we do that with our workspaces, and our workspace naming convention is that under source, we've got some sort of a URL. GitHub.com is great. Usually it's a version control repository thing. So GitHub.com is the domain. So we got our workspace, source, and then we have the domain, and then we have the username, and then any of the username's code. And that's going to be unique, right? And so I could download all that with go git, and it's going to uniquely, you know, put that code into my file structure so you could see, you know, uh, new seven hatch is that UUID. So when I went and got, you know, go, when I said go get uh, new seven hatches code, it created a folder new seven hatch and put new seven hatches code in there, right? And so my go get command would have looked like what when I asked for new seven hatches uh, code? What would just go get and what's the rest? Yeah, whatever it was, right? So go get github.com uh, forward slash new seven hash forward slash right whatever folder or package I wanted to get. And when I did mine, is go get github.com goes to eleven and go lang training, and that was the example in the previous one. And so the, the the workspace sort of maps to my code on GitHub, and then when I get it, it it matches my file structure and it keeps everything unique. And then when I import the code into uh, into a, a program, so let me just see, get a, when I import code, right, so here I'm importing format package, and so when I import any package that's part of the SDK, I just say the package name, um, and that's all under the SDK source folder, and, uh, but if I imported new seven hatches UUID, I would have in that port, import statement, uh, github.com, forward slash new seven hatch forward slash UUID, right? And then that, that would be the import statement. And so that's all connected back to the workspace. So we use the workspace path, you know, and we use that with go git, and it's everything after source, right? GitHub.com, da, da, da. And we use it on imports, everything after source, da, 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 right? So everything after the source folder is the unique package name, except for the SDK. And the SDK, right, you can see the SDK here has just got its own source folder. And then I pulled in format, which would be right there, you know. If I wanted to pull in the HTTP 
uh, package library from the SDK, I would import net slash HTTP. But again, the concept here is everything after the source folder. Everything after the source folder. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the concept you want to take away from packages and docs is this idea of unique namespaces and, and uh, everything after the source folder is the unique namespace uh, for that package. And, uh, and then when you use go git, it's all the GitHub stuff. When you do the import, it's again all the GitHub stuff except for the SDK. He's just referring to it directly. And so that's what these, these uh, slides show you. It's just like the different folder organization and how to think about packages. You can kind of pretty much just think of them like folders. And, and even when you go to godoc.org, right, there's net HTTP. And so that's for the SDK. And so godoc has everybody's code. And so if I, and you can see how that maps again to the folder structure. And uh, so here's a question for you. If I wanted to bring in cookie jar, that says cookie jar right there. If I wanted to bring in cookie jar to my code, uh, what would be the URL, or better yet, what would be the URL by which you would look it up at godoc.org, cookie jar? How would I look that up at godoc.org? Godoc.org, what? <coughs> Yeah, slash net, slash HTTP, slash cookie jar. If I wanted to look up uh, New Seven Hatches uh, documentation at <coughs> github.com, or sorry, godoc.org, what would be the URL of New Seven Hatches documentation at, at godoc.org? <laughs> so let's try it. Godoc.org forward slash github.com forward slash New Seven Hatch, go UUID. Crazy, huh? Get GitHub, godoc.org forward slash github.com. But that's the package path. That's the unique package name, right? It's kind of a weird mind thing. It's like, wait, he's got two domains there? But if we look at the UID options, we can see a lot of that. And if we click this guy, it's going to be godoc.org forward slash github.com. Whatever that one is. All right, so just wanting you to kind of like, okay, I'm kind of getting this unique package thing. It's everything after the source folder, and I use that unique name for a package at godoc.org. I use it in my import statement, and then I also use it, where's the other place? And go get, right? So that's, that's how I refer to a package. So there's, that's how we look it up, cookie jar. That's the important takeaway. The unique package name is determined by the path after the source folder. And you can see I'm demonstrating that there, right, in that URL. And then kind of showing it over here. Didn't find or how it's related to my, uh, well, that's actually the SDK, everything after source. And here is uh, my workspace, everything after source is the unique package name. And that's what namespaces are, and that's how we find the documentation. And we've looked at Godoc versus Golang versus Godoc at the terminal. I usually name, use Godoc.org as it includes packages of others. And that just pretty much reiterates that. And uh, package naming, I think that's really good. So who knows the idiomatic way to name packages? Or what do you think? Anybody have any information on that? Just curious. Idio, idiomatic, the idiot way to name packages. Idiomatic way to name packages. So uh, Go uh, really strives for having lean syntax. They don't like verbosity, right? Like that's idiomatic Go is to have short, concise, evocative, right? Err on the side of brevity. And uh, so package name should be just a single word. No camel case, no dashes, right? And it should all be lowercase. And so uh, we can take a look here, just to kind of get used to reading docs. Let's read a little bit just about package names. First salmon in Go source file must be package name, <clears throat> where name is the package default name for imports. Go's convention is that the package name is the last element of the import path. The package imported as crypto rot 13 should be named rot 13. Um, so, you know, if we were to refer to a function in rot 13, it'd be rot 13 
you know, dot Caesar cipher or something would be using the function in the code. Executable commands must always use package main. There's no requirement that package names be unique across all packages linked to a single binary, only that the import paths, their full file names, everything after the source folder, be unique. See effect of Go to learn more about Go's naming conventions. Okay. So that was the, the one we were just at was the spec language. Wait, is that? No, that's not spec. I don't know. What, am, what are we in? How to write Go code. We're in how to write Go code. All right. And then here is effect of Go. This was a big question for me. That's why I've taken a minute on it. I like that example about the buff IO reader. Any questions? Get it? You know that quote uh, about computer science? Anybody know the two hard, two, the, there are only, anybody know the rest of this? There are only two hard things in computer science. What are they? Naming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearing cash and naming things. <laughs> I, I disagree with that quote, but <laughs> maybe if, after a few more years of experience. Um, so you can search for packages and libraries at godoc.org if you need to do something. You could just go there and search. So one of your uh, homework assignments will be to look for Gorilla Sessions. And, uh, you know, so I, I type in UUID and I get results there. And that's the one that we used this summer. So, you know, we really learned about namespaces and the importance of everything after, whoa, hey, come back, um, uh, unique name space of packages, everything after the source folder, right? <clears throat> and uh, we looked at documentation, the difference between those and, and package name paths and how they're, they're used, right, in imports and go get and looking things up at godoc.org and then searching for packages. And so you have a few more exercises there. Um, anybody have questions about all that? And uh, we've learned a lot so far, right? So two days, uh, only actually like an hour and 45 minutes that we've been going. You've learned Golang's awesome. You learned about SHA-1 checksum. You learned Go version, Go EMB, Go help, right? Uh, you looked at environment variables, Go path and Go root. You learned how to set up your workspace, bin package source, github.com, your username, your packages, your code. And we looked at, you know, uh, setting path environment variables, bash profile, bash RC. We looked at different Go IDEs, WebStorm and Atom. We looked at uh, Funk main, and that's the entry point to your uh, software, obviously. And we looked at packages and functions versus methods. Um, we didn't talk about that. Parameters versus arguments, we did talk about. We'll come back to functions versus methods. Expressions versus statements, we talked about. Variable constants, literals, go run, go build, go install. Go get. And uh, <clears throat> there's a bunch of different Go commands that you can look up by following that link there. So we saw a few of those other ones. 
We looked at Go, GitHub, and WebStorm and how they all integrate, and there's the slides that walk you through step by step to kind of get that all running. We looked at uh, uh, the Git log and dot Git ignore. We looked at packages and libraries and naming and the unique namespace and how that all plays into everything. And we looked at documentation and the difference between godoc.org, golang.org, and godoc at the terminal. Like, that's a lot, right? And really, really good. But I think that even if you're like, okay, that's all, that feels like a lot. But when I say all that, you're kind of like, no, I have familiarity with that. And if I stop and think about each of those, I'm able to start recalling or I know where to go back to look to kind of figure it out. And, and this is like super important, like, you know, for those who are in the spring class, right? It was kind of like I was struggling with some of this stuff, like trying to figure out just like getting everything set up and all the documentation, how it all works. So this kind of foundation, I think, is super helpful in learning Go. Um, the last thing, functions versus methods. This was a question for me for a bit with Go because, you know, if I get code from another package and then use it, is that a method that I brought in? And my understanding, and Daniel, throwing your two cents or uh, any of you guys, Aaron, Shin, Eunice. Um, but the, the, the uh, method in Go, a method in Go is something that has a receiver on it. And so when you put a receiver on something, it becomes a method and anything else is a function. So even if you have a function that's quote unquote public, and I say quote unquote public because they don't talk about public really. They just, I mean, they say, they say this is like public in other languages, but when you have a function that's capitalized, so it's in one package, and you could use it, right, because it's public, then uh, that's just a function. But a method has a receiver on it. So uh, maybe there's a little bit of a slide that explained that a little bit in there that I glanced over because I was going quick. But that's the difference between functions and methods, and now become more clear. Some of you are nodding your head, heads. <laughs> All right, so that's, uh, that's five. Anybody got questions? We're good? Megan. Yeah, what's up? Actually, about um, WebStorm. Yeah, let's hear it. Um, in your slides, you have point at a command, and you, you say you press command, and then the actual command sure. itself. Sure, sure. My question is, is the command that you're talking about something that's on Mac? Or what yeah, yeah, so that's oh, okay. the place the command key. Yeah, yeah, so no, control. Question. That's perfect. Okay. Great. Okay. Good question. All right, anybody else? Yeah. Uh, so actually, it's my first lecture today. And sure. I didn't attend the first one. So can sure. you just tell me what I missed in the first lecture? Better yet, you could go home and watch it all. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. just log into Blackboard okay. and go to lectures and uh, class lecture CSU Fresno. You click on that, and this is you know everything we covered Tuesday. And then the lectures from today will be up there. So I'm really trying to give a lot of resources because we have a limited time period in class and things come quick. And, uh, and the first part's going to be quick because this is supposed to be the second version of this class, Advanced Web Programming. So the first two weeks will be a review. Um, and yeah, so just check that out. But you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. There's a lot of good people in here to help you out. And, you know, you'll know more than you knew at the beginning. All right. Next one.